Oh yeah, it's coming on. We're, we're alive now, so if you go to the channel, we should be on there. Let me see. All right. All right, we're having some people rolling in. Okay, we're good. Here we go. People are coming in. I'm just going to go ahead and share this link. Let me see. Share this on Facebook. All right, Clarence with Emerson. And we are live. Let's see. All right, people are starting to roll in here. That's good. Let's see what the crowd's looking like. How many people we got so far? Oh, man, nice crowd. Okay. All right, we got over 100 people. All right, that was quick, without even sharing on Facebook. What's up, Turtle Riders? I've gone ahead and shared this uh, link to the Clarence Woods. Well, this is the Turtle Boy live show, as you know. From the basement. Uh, as some of you guys saw today, I got a new computer, RIP FUPA computer. It is currently, but I, I'm i not streaming from this new one yet because I'm still trying to figure out something with OBS with that. So we're doing the phone. It's going to work out just fine. Uh, I've shared the link, guys, to the Facebook page, uh, the Clarence Woods Emerson page, and the Turtle Boy Sports Forever page. Let people know that we're live. We're going to have a good show tonight. Uh, and on top of that, also, the uh, the Turtle Boy fundraiser. So I, another day in court today. That was really fun. Uh, the And who knows how that thing's going to turn out. We'll see. Uh, if one of the mods could share the link to the fundraiser, uh, that'd be great. Once again, this is always going to be free. But it's basically, you know, Turtle Rider funded at this point because God knows our advertisers get harassed up the yin-yang with coronavirus. Nobody's got money for advertising anymore. It's just, it's a tough time, man. Tough time to be a small business owner in this country. That's one of the things we're going to be talking about today. So with us today, um, we have a, a guy who uh, I kind of became familiar with through the blog. I think I saw you on Twitter a couple of times. He's a state representative from Bill Ricca, home of uh, Rizzi. Uh, his name is Mark Lombardo. How you doing, Mark? I'm doing great. How you doing? Good. Thanks for coming on the show with us today. Can you guys hear him out there all right? Uh, yeah, so uh, welcome to the program. So the reason I'm having Mark on here today is because um, I saw a video that he put out the other day. Somebody alerted me to it, and it was uh, it had, not everybody liked the video. And it was a good video because for the first time, an elected official in Massachusetts was throwing out the crazy idea that business owners should be allowed to open their business. Why don't you uh, kind of take it from here? Yeah, you know, so I think we've we've watched over the last uh, you know, six, eight weeks, everyone doing their part and doing their social distancing and wearing their face coverings and doing everything that's been asked of us. Um, but at the same time, while we've done that, um, over three quarters of a million Massachusetts residents have filed for unemployment. You know, I've got small business owners that call my office every day wondering how they can uh, how they can open up. And they look at Walmart and Target and BJ's and Costco and CVS, these big national chains get to be open. And, you know, they're asking the logical question, what about us? What about Main Street? You know, and I've got residents that are saying, I, I don't want a handout. I just want to go back to work. And so they've uh, they've been reaching out to me and that's when can we open up? When can we open up? When can we get things, you know, some semblance of normalcy? And you know, the, as I listen to uh, the governor speak day after day, and and you know I'm watching numbers come down, which is good, but I'm not seeing a real indication of a desire to open up. And I'm seeing you know other states like New York locking it down through June. And yep. you know the last thing that small business owners in Massachusetts can do is lock down until June. It's going to literally kill their businesses forever. Well, I don't know if you saw today that both guns guns won in court. In federal court, uh, it turns out you can't just ban guns from being sold. There's a constitutional amendment that kind of protects that. And uh, <laughs> golf courses were open for a different reason, and I would argue that public shaming worked. There was two brave uh, – really one brave golf uh, course owner in uh, West Boylston, Wachusa Country Club, who just decided – who made an announcement, went on Fox News and said, I'm opening. So – and it kind of forced Charlie Baker's hand because it brings up the question of 
what danger is golfing towards? Uh, can anybody explain the scientific danger of golfing and spreading the coronavirus? Well, from the beginning, I've always thought, uh, or certainly didn't understand, how going into Walmart was was considered safe, but uh, going on a golf course was not. And trust me, I know a lot of golfers, and and uh, not a lot of them are standing on top of each other, especially when they're slicing their balls in the woods, right? So uh, I just never understood that. And I think you're right. I, I applaud that business owner um, for for her brave approach, to saying, "I got a business to open up. I got a family to feed. We're gonna, we're going to do it." And uh, I think public opinion absolutely turned the tide there. And I think the reality of what I've been asking people to do is make your voice known on, on other things, right? On make, make it known that we do need to indeed start to open up Massachusetts. Now, nobody's saying, you know, go back to pre COVID open on day one, right? We're not saying jam up restaurants and bars, do all that. But if we could find a way to socially distance in supermarkets and we can do the safe things there, I, I think we could probably figure out how to do that in church and in, in stores that are on Main Street and uh, and not just Walmart and Target. So let me ask you, you're a Republican and Charlie Baker's technically a Republican too. Do you have his ear at all? Because what the hell is wrong with him? A lot of people are upset with him. I'm upset with him. He wore he didn't wear a mask. He, this new mask law, which a lot of us think is ridiculous, uh, yesterday went into effect. He was seen at the state police graduation. He was not wearing it for the majority of the graduation. Uh, he, he was in, using a microphone. I mean, I think it's all ridiculous anyway, but it's his law, so he's just not looking good. And it just seems like he's got great poll numbers. He doesn't have to run for re-election. He's built up enough political capital where he can pretty much do whatever he wants. Why isn't he doing anything? And do you have his ear at all? So I, I do have an open line of communication with the governor. Uh, he's someone I consider a friend. Um, but like with all of our friends, it doesn't mean we agree with him all the time. And um, there, you know, I, I don't envy the position the governor's in. All right. Not an easy job. Trying to balance public health with trying to re reopen an economy. I get it. It's a tall task. Um, but um, I think he's moved a little slow on trying to reopen Massachusetts. I think it took a little too long to get this uh, task force together. Uh, I would have loved to have seen them all given recommendations on May 1st, not starting their recommendations on May 18th, which means really reopening starting in June. I just think it's been too delayed. Um, you know, I, I think that um, the governor probably has a lot of health officials in his ear. And, you know, the job of health officials is not to care about the economy. Their, their, their job is not to worry about uh, people's employment. They're singularly focused on, on health care. But the reality is, as, as a public and as, you know, families, we care about not just our health, but the ability to, to feed our families and pay our bills. So, you know, you need to take that balanced approach. And, um, you know, I'm hoping that the governor will, will start to lean a little bit towards um, an approach of safely reopening in some phases here. I hope so. I mean, that's what I'm hope. I hope you get in his ear. I hope you can kind of tell him because I think he got the message today with the golfing. I think that was a, a pot. He was shamed into that. That is my belief. That's a belief of a lot of people that he would, had he not had this woman not made this public stand the golf courses would still be closed. Do we need golf? No, we can live without golf, but it's what golf represents. It is the beginning of the opening of the economy. Yeah, and, and again, I think it's the, the opening of the economy that's so important. What I, what I found interesting is after I posted my, my video, there was a ton of support, which was awesome. Um, but there was the stay-at-home crowd, no, yeah. you know, lock-it-down forever crowd. Man, did they get angry. They're vicious, yeah. aren't they? But they're, you know what the, the interesting is? Like, they're so personally vicious, right? Oh, yeah. Now, calling every name in the book, you want people to die. Yes. Look, well, in particular, grandma. to die. grandmothers I mean, in particular. Yes. Right. Right. Stop it with that. When you want people to die, nobody wants anyone to die. What I also don't want people to do is starve or feel like they have to depend on governments. You know, I mean, I've heard some pretty tragic stories and I can't share all the stories I come in my office. Right. There's confidentiality that I owe to people that come to me. But I promise you, there are hundreds and hundreds of stories in the last six weeks that I've helped people in Bill Ricker alone. Never mind people throughout the Commonwealth who, you know, people eating mayonnaise sandwiches because, you know, their their business is closed or they both both adults have lost their, their jobs. I mean, this is real, right? So, you know, the, the stay-at-home crowd and, and, you know, don't question the overlord crowd is is really surprising to me. But then, man, you, you saw it today. The second you put that video out, which is pretty reasonable, it was just immediately like, you're going to kill old people. But you know what? Just I've I'm immune to people like that. It's like you're, that's you're not a serious person. You're not arguing in good faith. I'm not even going to humor you with uh, a reasoned response because you haven't put any thought 
or reason into your argument. So I'm not going to waste any time, you know, arguing with you back and forth. Your entire argument is based off of hysteria and emotion. So, uh, but like I said, I just think it seems to be a unilateral thing. Like we don't need the whole state legislature because that would never happen with this state legislature. No freaking way. Uh, but <laughs> the governor, you know, the fact that he is technically a Republican and you're a Republican gives me hope that people like you, Senator Fatman, uh, and the other five Republicans that serve in Beacon Hill can kind of get in his ear, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah, no, it's, I, listen, what I can tell you um, behind the scenes, and I think you're going to start seeing more people coming up. There are more reps that think like me. And by the way, there are some on, that are Democrats. On the left? Actually Any like names? Too. Any names or are they too? Uh, and, and so I'm not there that I can give their names. Okay. And I hope that they'll come out and, and have the courage to, to speak publicly like I am. Colleen Jerry? Um, She's kind of on the uh, fence. So I actually haven't talked to Colleen directly, but she's a very reasonable person. Yeah. And I, I have no doubt that uh, she would take a very balanced approach as mm -hmm. well. So, you know, it's it's um, it's time. And, you know, we've got to get our, our voice heard. And we've got to get through the noise of, hey, you want people to die. I think the other thing we've got to keep in mind with all this is I, I think the stay at home crowd is trying to make us uh, apply a standard that's actually pretty unfair and a, a standard that we don't apply to anything else, which is eliminate all risk. Well, we don't do that for anything, right? Nothing. We can't eliminate all risk, but we can be smart about it. We can ask people who are 70 years older to really think if they come out and if you're immunocompromised, really think about before you go out. But if you're a healthy young 40-year-old and you want to put a face covering on and socially distance and go do something, you're probably going to be okay. And, and you know, th that's what gonna, it's going to take to get Massachusetts working again because, you know, not only are individuals hurting, you know, government – uh, revenues just from this last month were down two billion dollars. So when you think about your local police fire, your teachers trying to make sure that nothing's affected, well, people don't get back to work. All of that's going to be affected because there's going to be massive budget cuts because the money's not there. Well, it comes from the money tree, though. I mean, that's that's the beauty. Like, it's like nobody thinks about where any of this stuff comes from. Like, we're just going to keep passing stimulus bills and paying people not to work. It's like, but then nobody's paying business taxes and nobody's paying property taxes. And where is the money coming from? It's like, they don't think of these things. Yeah. There's just not enough money in the government that it can yeah. uh, take the place of the economy. That's right. why the, you know, the socialist crowd, um, it, it just will never work. You know, at some point yeah. you, you run out of other people's money. And so, you know, I'm not saying what we're doing is socialism now, but the idea that we can lock down forever and government can provide, it's just, it's, it's the math just doesn't work. Right. And, and yeah. quite frankly, that's how America is all about. We all want to yeah. provide for ourselves. Yep. All right. Well, um, I appreciate, I wish I could talk for longer, but I, I had a, a long day in court today, uh, with a, this is another thing I could talk about. I'll tell you one thing that needs to be fixed in this state is uh, for, I don't know if it's tort reform or judicial reform. So I write about people a lot. I expose people a lot, right? And they have a tendency to go and take out harassment orders against me and restraining orders. So I've been to like every courthouse in this state and I never get one against me. Like they always get denied, but it's the hassle of driving to Springfield one day or, you know, Falmouth, you know, it's like you're, I'm driving all over the state to go. Today I went to Manchester, New Hampshire to, you know, and I know that's not something you could control, but I have mentioned this to Senator Fatman. I never really followed up on it. It's just that this abuse of the court system by people who have their feelings hurt on the Internet. And I, it doesn't go anywhere, but it costs people like me, small business owners, time and money. And there's no, like, filter in the court. Like, nobody in the clerk's office looks at this and says, well, this is ridiculous. He's not harassing you. He's just writing about you. And that's a constitutional right. Yeah, I, I totally appreciate that. I can only imagine what you have to go through. I'll also say this. I think it's um, pretty unbelievable that in the year 2020 in the United States of America, that you can essentially be shadow banned by uh, social media sites like Facebook and Twitter just because they don't like some of the words you oh, use. Tell me and, about uh, it. I think it's I think it's pretty outrageous the way you, you've been treated. Um, just because, well, you don't always say nice things about people, but hey, that's America, and uh, for them to do that to you because you don't necessarily align with their point of view is terrible. And, that, and that's where I, I, I like it. That's things. where I like it. Cause like a lot of states, a lot of state reps wouldn't want to be kind of on the record. You know, like you might take crap for this. Like you came on the turtle boy show. Oh my God, he's so terrible. And the, you know, he said a bad word here and there. So that takes balls. And I appreciate that. And, uh, I think you're ending the stigma that it's like a bad thing to be associated with turtle boy. Oh, well, you keep up your, keep up your, uh, good work and, uh, good luck to you. And thanks for what you're doing. All right. Thanks a lot, Mark. Have a good night. You too. Bye. All right.
All right, guys. So that was a cool call from a state representative running, or he's an uh, incumbent state representative. I think he's running on opposed this time. Good guy, Mark Lombardo. I've seen him. He used to follow us on Twitter back when I was on Twitter and stuff like that. Young guy. I mean, that's pretty cool to have a, a guy, a state representative, an elected official who can actually communicate with the governor. Maybe now he'll go to him. He'll talk to him. We'll see what happens. You know, Charlie Baker's a crowd pleaser. He'll do whatever the crowd wants. Puts his finger up in the air, whatever they want, they'll do. So we'll see what happens from that. All right. With that said, um, let's, in one moment, we're going to get started on this uh, new thing. I just want to read people who donate because I, let's see, Billy Jean says for the turtle cup. Oh, you don't like the Paw Patrol cup? Come on. Hmm. Chase is on the case. Thank you, Suzanne. She says for great content. Appreciate that. Anonymous says, thanks, Unc. I appreciate that, Anonymous. Michelle says, turtle boy is the only thing keeping me sane some of these last few weeks. My pleasure. Uh, Paul says, only media source who cares about the truth. Don't always agree with Aiden, but he's a good guy and actually gives a shit. You're goddamn right about that. So, what we're going to talk about right now, and by the way, I'm back on, so, no more FUPA computer. And I figured the problem I couldn't get on Twitter is because I used the same phone number. I used to think they were tracing my Wi-Fi, but then my wife made a Twitter account on her phone and it hasn't been shut down yet. It didn't work on her computer because I'd made a Twitter account on her computer before. So I figured out they're banning devices. So my phone is banned with that because of the phone number. I got to get a new phone number. So I'm going to have a burner phone. Lorraine, I, maybe Lorraine, you could show me how to do that. I don't know. Uh, and I got a new computer today. FUPA computer's upstairs. And I created a Twitter account. I'm on Twitter. How many followers am I up to here? Let's see. I'm up to 762 followers. You can find me at Real Uncle TB. At Real Uncle TB. I'm right on there. Give me a follow if you're on Twitter. Ooh, 763 followers. So let's talk about my day in court. So this was a very interesting day. Uh, drove to Manchester. It wasn't a dump. I thought it would be terrible. But then again, nobody's out, so you never know. And I get up there, and they make you wear a mask when I go in the courtroom. Oh, God, I had to wear a mask the whole time. When I was talking, I had to wear a mask. I couldn't breathe. It's terrible. Terrible. So, apparently, his name is Foho. Foho. But I'm going to call him Fo He's always going to be Fojo to me. He's Fojo. So, Fojo's sitting there, and he's got his laptop, all these documents, Gaffney style. And th these are, this is what I was given today. This is uh, his stack of evidence. Uh, labeled Exhibit A through P. A through P. And he read all of these to the judge today. The judge was a woman named Messer. He got to go first. He spoke for about 30 to 45 minutes. And he literally read through everything. He read every single comment Clarence Woods Emerson has ever made. Uh, he read through every comment that a lot of you people have made. I had to answer questions from the judge saying... Are you Megan Lindsay? Are you Dick N. Volva? This came up like several times. He accused me of being Richard N. Volva like multiple times. He accused me of being Jen Houston several times. And I said, Your Honor, I'm not Jen Houston. I can prove it. Jen Houston messaged me and offered to come into court. Whoever, I don't even know who Jen Houston is. They messaged me. He said, can I see it? Yeah, sure. Here's, the, here's the, my text message conversation with Jen Houston. And then they look at that and they're like, well, we don't, how do we know you're not messaging yourself here? I'm like, are you kidding me? What state am I in? What country am I in? New Hampshire. I thought this is the live free or die state. I thought Massachusetts was the restrictive state. So I'm sitting there trying to explain myself. Say, no, I'm not Jen Houston. I'm like, I, what is this guy talking about? This guy thinks I'm everybody on the internet. And other th he says that I made uh, false statements about him. Not true. He brought up that, oh, he's been, you know, he's been involved in a lot of lawsuits before. So Exhibit A, Exhibit A is um, a printout of a Worcester Magazine article about me written by, uh, <laughs> I don't even know who this is written by. Uh, it's Billy, probably Billy Butthurt there, Billy, Billy Buttmunch. He says, uh, there are numerous fake accounts tied to Turtle Boy Sports most prevalent being Clarence Woods Emerson. So that is evidence that he did. And he goes on to say, then he has the Clive McFarlane article, and he says, Turtle Boy Sports is an anonymous blog. Many feel represents a hateful and divisive voice 
in the community. This happened. So he's reading from the freaking Gaffney lawsuit. That was Exhibit A. All right. Exhibit B. I mean, this is fucking... I mean, you can't make this... Exhibit B. Let's see what Exhibit B is. Oh, Exhibit B is the email he sent me. And and I said this. I'm like, you're on it. He says in the email twice, if I receive no response to this email, my clients will pursue all legal remedies at their disposal. So that's saying you better respond or else. So it's a threat. Okay. And, I go, and he's like, it's unprofessional. He's t correcting my spelling. He missed a couple spelling. He didn't even get the spelling right. And he also says, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. I had a lot of questions. So I contacted him in many avenues, all three avenues. I'd like to point out to the judge at the end here. You guys can see it. Notice what he signs. Okay. His name, his phone number, his email, and his Facebook. AKA, contact me at any and all of these. So I did. And he didn't respond. And now he's trying to get an order against me. So that's that. That's exhibit B. Exhibit C, okay, is uh, the article. He's like, Your Honor, you should see the way this guy talks to. Holy nerd. I thought this guy would be like a macho douchebag. Oh my God. Nerd city. Like nervous, kept repeating himself. One of the worst attorneys I've ever seen. Like I thought Gaffney was bad. Gaffney looks like Perry Mason compared to this guy. So he's like, Your Honor, he called me bootleg Avenatti on this one. Uh, Mr. Avenatti is a criminal attorney. He's a, he went to jail. So I did not go to jail. It's like, dude, it's a fucking joke. You kind of look like him, you know? You you act like him. Your mannerisms are like him. And it's literally just a printout of the blog I wrote about him. So that's Exhibit C. Exhibit D. I mean, think of all the fucking paper that's being wasted right now. And keep in mind, the case before me, the restraining order case before me, was two guys, right, Arguing over a, a girl, a four-year-old girl, who whose mother is in jail again, and one of the guys is like a the biological dad's a deadbeat. The other one says the girl calls him dad, and he wants the the bio dad wants a restraining order against the other dad. This is like serious shit. Like fucking kids are involved. Ratch. This is stuff that needs to be litigated. Then we come up and we're talking about Turtle Boy. And, and Dick and Vulva. I mean, I could not believe that the judge did not just say, because I've been to these, this isn't my first rodeo. They usually listen, their judges are sharp. They listen to the stuff and like, dude, what are, what are we doing? Usually they interrupt. Like if they want to read everything, like Kate Peter, you guys heard that thing. Kate Peter tried reading everything and the judge just cut her off. Like, we're not, do you have any threats that he sent you? Do you have any threats? No, okay. So, the entire basis of his argument, right, was that I'm not threatening him. I was harassing him, he said, by responding to his mess emails and commenting on his page and stuff like that, pointing out that he's unfamiliar with the Constitution. But he also said that other people are contacting him, uh, third parties. And he had like, you're, all these people were writing reviews and you're on it. And he goes, he wrote, he said this several times, he wrote, do not go to his page. And when he says, do not go to his page, that's a sign to turtle riders to go to his page. And so I said, your honor, what would you like me to say? Would you like me to tell people to go there? Cause I specifically said not to go there. I don't know what else I can say. If I said, go there and do this, then I'd be responsible for telling people to go there and do that. But I didn't. I did the opposite. I said, do not go there. And the reason I write that is because in the past, people have gone and harassed people I've written about. And I want to make it clear, do not do this. I, can, I want to be on record, documented, that I condemn this. I'm damned if I do, damned if I don't, apparently. I'm like, if this court finds that I'm guilty of harassment because I said, don't harass him, think of the Pandora's box this opens up. That's insane. That's insane. And if I even had, if I even had said, go to his page, leave bad reviews, that would still not be harassment. That would be free speech because he's a bad lawyer. And if you want to give him a bad review for being a crappy lawyer, 
That's your right. He can take you to court if he wants. It's not my fault. I can't, like, because of the size of my audience, I have to change the things that I say. What is the cutoff? What is the limit? What if I only have 10 followers, right? 10 people that listen to me. Can I do it then? Is it because we have over 3 million monthly page views and over 10,000 YouTube subscribers that we're all of a sudden, my speech is limited? What, what precedent is being set here, Your Honor? So, he went on. And by the way, he also played two voicemails out from 617 numbers. I don't have a 617 number. The first one was like literally the most harmless thing ever. It was, a, it was like a prank call. The second one was not even threatening. It was juvenile. It was stupid. And for the record, I condemn that. Okay? I don't want anybody threatening him. Nobody should threaten anybody we write about, obviously. It's bad. But I can't stop three million people. I can't do it. I'm not responsible. That's absurd to say that I'm responsible for that. Give me a break. So Exhibit D comes up. What is Exhibit D? Another blog. All right. It says, Attorney Robert Fojo writes email demanding takedown of blog about delinquent Manchester nightclub owner for insensitive comments about Greeks and female employees. What's wrong with that? I don't know. And it's literally just a printout of the blog. He's like, he compared me to Scott Peterson. He made fun of my page. He did this, he did that. He made inappropriate comments about Greeks, Your Honor. I can't read it out loud. He didn't say the, the big dick joke. That's a goddamn shame. He, he didn't make the big dick joke. Uh, but anyway, and he goes, well, I'm going to get to the good stuff. Where do you see Ryan Waters comes up in this? Where you, it got Things got wild. So there's Exhibit D. What do we got here for Exhibit E? This is my day in court. This took an hour and a half. Exhibit E, what do we got here? Huh. Oh, okay. So this is a, a post from the Turtle Boy Sports Forever page. Dun, dun, dun. And he's got highlighted stuff there. Ooh, Feta Cheese Freddy. Racist, he said. Bootleg Michael Avenai attorney. Doesn't like that. That's highlighted. The Portuguese, the Greeks. Butt hurt about satire. That's literally what he has highlighted. This is a grown man. This is in a, this is taking place in a New Hampshire courtroom. This is the state of New Hampshire. This is how they run. This is the kind of nonsense that they humor up there. And he's like, here, this is proof that the 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 page connects to the the blog. It's like I don't deny that. Nobody. What are you talking about? What a waste of paper. Then Exhibit F comes up. And what do we got here? Ooh, same thing except Clarence with Emerson. And he goes, Your Honor, he makes fake Facebook pages. He makes fake pages. I don't think this judge probably is even on Facebook. To her, that might sound scary. I don't know. Like, devious. It's like, Your Honor, lots of people make fake Facebook pages. Tons of people use fake Facebook. There we go. The Clarence Woods Emerson account, shared account. I've given that account out to multiple people. So, I don't know what you want me to tell you. Like, I can't even tell you all the comments. Like, this has been adjudicated in Massachusetts courtrooms before with the Gaffney case. I can't be responsible for everything Clarence says. So, either way, Clarence didn't even say anything threatening. He made some comments, free speech. And the most important aspect that was left out of this, that I said to him, I'm like, Yanni, he, Facebook comes with a block function. I know this because he's blocked me. Because she asked him, has, has he taken the, the comments down? I go, Your Honor, I'll take him down if he wants me to take him down. I don't care about comments on Facebook, but he's blocked me, so I'm unable to. However, they are still up there. He wants, he's clearly not hurt by this because the comments are all still there. So what, what do you want me to do? How, how can I take them down? And I go, all these people that he's complaining about coming after him, he can just block them. He goes, no, Your Honor, I'm very busy. I'm very busy. I, I, I don't have time to keep up with it. Then don't keep up with it. How, first of all, you have a freaking secretary answer your shit, apparently. When I messaged the, the page, there's like a secretary, I think, or somebody that works for him, an aide. Maybe, probably him, who knows. But anyway, um, yeah. I mean, it's just like, so he's very busy, he's very important, and this really hurts him, right? When he goes to his page and he sees people mocking him, that hurts him, that's harassment. 
But it's not just enough to feel like harassed. You have to feel in fear. How was he in fear, Your Honor? And I'm going to get to that shortly. Uh, actually, I think it's in one of these blogs I just went by that I actually read some things that he was saying. Do um, you guys remember the comments that he was making under the... Let's see. Oh, did he not put those in? Oh, isn't that... Wouldn't that be convenient? We'll get back to that. Uh, what do we got for Exhibit G? Exhibit G. Okay, so he's got pictures here of his personal page and comments left by Clarence Woods Emerson. Uh, he's got an open page, by the way. Clarence Woods Emerson says, I tried calling you. Are you familiar with the First Amendment? Did they teach that in law school? Do you even have custody? Yeah, so it's like he, he's literally reading comments that Clarence Woods Emerson made. Say, like, who cares? This is a, you have an open Facebook page. At no point did this guy ever tell me to stop contacting him. Not point. You can't engage somebody in a conversation, and then they engage you back, and you file a harassment order. You can't. You can't. You got to tell me to stop if you're bothered by it, or else it's a setup. I remember what it was now. There was a comment he made about masturbation. Let me see if I can find it. Do you guys remember that comment? TV Daily News. Uh, Robert Fojo. Let's see if I can find it. Masturbation. Okay. No. Okay. You don't want to see what comes up for that. All right. Let's. All right. So, uh, if you guys recall, there was a guy named Ken who had, uh, shared the, who he's now suing now, who shared the, the, uh, the link to the YouTube show. And this guy went after him. And remember some of the things that he was saying about the show. So he, you know, he sent threatening messages to this guy saying he was going to show up at his work. He sent pictures of his, like his boys and stuff like that. And he's like, your honor, he called my friends gay because the fucking Schmitz gay meme, he brought this up and none of them are homosexual. None of them. Like this, I mean, it, this is a grown man talking about memes in court. Boy. And so I brought this up. I'm like, your honor, he's not clearly not intimidated because he's writing about all this stuff. And I bring up this, his boy, Mitchell Fleming, who writes, looks like he just made an example out of you. And now you're upset and you just contacted him again. And he has a restraining order on you, which was granted because you were stalking him. You and your undereducated following are learning lessons now. I go, Your Honor, he sent him to do this. Oh, no, 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 we're not here for that, she said. We're not here for that. Whoa, 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 whoa. So when his friends show up on my page and write comments like that, he's not responsible. But when my followers show up on his page and leave comments, I'm responsible. Okay, just understanding how the laws work here in the lovely granite state. Uh, so, and I tried explaining the, uh, you know, it, he's complaining, your honor, he had a picture of me running a 5k and he said I was beating girls and that was mean and not nice. And oh, he said, I look like Scott Peterson. That's not the one. Let me find the right one. Yeah. The one where he like gets really cocky and here it is. Okay. Let me read this one to you. Cause I read this out loud to the judge and this seemed, she said, Things changed. Because I got to be honest with you. I, I'm i used to in and outs with these situations. The person files the restraining order, goes crazy. The judge corrects them, dismisses the order, and we're out of there. This one, the judge was like asking me questions. Like, did you leave this comment? It's like, who cares if I left this comment? It's a free speech issue. I can leave whatever comments I want. He didn't tell me not to. He contacted me first. What was I supposed to do? Who cares? Like, this is a free speech issue. And I bring up down here, like, let me read this message to you uh, that he posted. Um, that was like, kind of got the judge to realize maybe, because he, he kept saying he was in fear. And so I read some of these messages that he put. He says, um, I don't stick up for someone who has made a, a career of fucking others over or who doesn't acknowledge one of his kids and the other, he, uh, uh, that's a wrong, that's a, a, another woman writes that. So he writes to the guy, 
he links Clive McFarlane. And he says, um, I've personally received numerous messages and phone calls and voicemails from this guy. No, you haven't. He's crossed over into legit stalker territory. You're, you're applauding him. He goes on to say, you're defending a scumbag. All of these people have felt slighted at one point or another by said scumbag. And so this is all about having a bone to pick with him. So they, I think they mean followers of Turtle Boy, they resort to the only microphone they have to champion an anemic 400 plus view free, free online show to bash him because they can't actually masturbate in peace. What is it like to be so consumed with something? I said, your honor, does this sound like somebody who's in fear? He's on here mocking me. He's saying that my show is so anemic and inconsequential, his favorite word, that, that we don't matter. Like, oh, you guys are so pathetic. All you people are on there, you, you can't actually masturbate in peace. He sounds very scared. The second the judge heard this, she kind of looked at him differently. Like, are you lying to me, son? Like, are you, you know, and I hope she takes this into account. I really hope she does. But for the first time, I got to be honest, I didn't leave there feeling that good. Usually I leave there, I'm like, okay, there's no way. Because she said, she didn't make a ruling on it. And this happened with Hadassah too. This happened with Hadassah, he didn't make a ruling on it. And it also happened with Ryan Waters. They don't make a ruling right away in some of these cases. Well, she said he's going to take it under advisement. Now, I can't imagine how she can possibly issue a restraining order against me. Because she asked me, do you ever feel a need to contact him again? Do you ever plan on contacting him again? And I said, I initially said no. The more I think about it, I'm like, well, actually, I'm a reporter. So if I'm doing a story on him and I need a comment, I it's my duty to try to get a, you know, contact him for a comment. And I shouldn't have said no in hindsight because she took that as, well, so you don't mind if I give an order. She, she actually said that. You don't mind if we have an order. I'm like, yes, I mind very much if an order is in place. That's why I'm here right now. That's why I drove here during a pandemic to fight this in another state is because I care because my rights will be restricted. You can't, I don't even think you can collect unemployment if you have a restraining order on you. I, I Don't hold me to that. But I know it affects your LTC and, and there's no more important time to buy guns than right now, quite frankly, in America. Uh, so that's, I'm like, I, I absolutely care. Like these restraining orders are supposed to be a big deal. You don't just hand them out. So he goes on to say, this is another quote he put in there. Um, commenting alone, he tells somebody demonstrates support for this silly YouTube live show that barely anyone watched. My point is you're fueling a non-existent fire while indirectly helping someone else. <laughs> it's like, he's irrelevant. Goes on to say, there was a whopping 430 views on that live show. Dude is crushing it. Well, a little bit bigger tonight, I think. A little bit bigger tonight. 400, he goes, I was being sarcastic. 430 views is anemic. He's insignificant. And all of you are championing someone who isn't much more than our own Michael Gill up here, who also had a small, almost religious-like cult following and was eventually silenced by someone who was willing to fight back and sue him. This guy has been sued at least twice for his blogging. He is eventually going to hit a brick wall. You're cheering on his sad display. So I'm like, what is it, Your Honor? Is he scared of me? Because he keeps saying he's scared. He's in fear for his life. Obviously, this man is not in fear for his life. This man is just lying. He is wasting the court's time. And I made that clear to the judge. He is, he is making a mockery, Your Honor, of your courtroom right now. This is supposed to be a serious place of justice where victims come to be heard and to receive justice. And this man, who is clearly not scared in the least, who picked a fight with me by sending me a threatening email, allegedly on behalf of his client, but his client can't pay his cleaning lady, so how can he pay him? I don't know. Let's not forget that. And I don't know where I was going with this, but uh, <laughs> bottom line, he's wasting everybody's time. I mean, this is a joke. This is not why we have courts. This is a disgrace. And I, I, I'm i really shocked the judge didn't figure that out right now. Uh, Exhibit H is something that I didn't even make. It was a post by a, a Woody Emerson, an account that hasn't existed in a year. I don't even know where the hell he got that from. 
Exhibit I is, okay, so th this is where you people come in. Exhibit I is turtle right of comments. So Jen Houston, getting me in trouble, posts uh, the link to his page. Apparently that's not allowed. Amy Hackett, another person, link to the page. Amy Hackett says, I love porn. Amy Hackett says, I'd rather catch, catch the coronavirus and have Carol Baskin date my ex-boyfriend than have you as my lawyer. Interesting. Exhibit I. Then we have Dawn Zarella says, see what happens when you poke the turtle. Amazingly, if your client had just paid this woman, this wouldn't be happening. It's called karma. I mean, this is free speech. He say he is alleging, he, he told the judge that he thinks that these people aren't real. So Dawn Zarella, he thinks you're not real. Megan Lindsay, he thinks you're not real. Attorney Richard Volva, he is quite sure was me that was brought up. He actually said this. He goes, Honor, Your Honor, there's an account called Attorney Richard N. Volva. And when you when you use the short name for that, it's actually Dick in Volva. It's sexually derogatory term. He actually said that. I mean, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, Robbie Manning, Mike Nazaro, more Amy Hackett, Mimi Bradley, Issa Marie, Tracy Lane. You guys all got me in trouble, but I still love you, okay? But he thinks you're all me. He actually told the judge this, that he, it is my belief, sir, that my belief, ma'am, that he is all these people. And the judge said, well, is it you? I'm like, no. Well, can you prove it's not you? How can I prove it's not me? How can I prove that? How do I do, like, what do you, how do I prove I'm not every fake account on the internet? Am I, is this happening in real life right now in a courtroom? I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to answer this? I hope she was just humoring him. I really do. Exhibit J comes up, and it's more comments that Clarence Wood Demison left on his page. Blah, blah, blah. The judge asked me, did you leave all these comments? Then we went on to J, then O. So he missed L-M-N-O. Then again, spelling was never his specialty. So we're on to Exhibit O. Exhibit O is a big one. It's another one with you people. And what do we got here? Your Honor, I was getting all these. There is a Vincent LaGuardia, Your Honor. Vincent LaGuardia left lots of comments and likes on my page. Uh, Vincent LaGuardia Gambini, who is a character from the movie My Cousin Vinny, who's not, there's another fake name, Your Honor. Another fake name. Well, oh. Jason Metcalf wrote that he hosted a swingers party and offered his girlfriend to me. I can't, I cannot confirm that. And I, for the record, because I know Fojo's watching this, I condemn that. Not good. I don't, should I say that? Am I allowed to say don't do that? Am I allowed to say that's bad? I want to make, like, for real. For real. Bad. Not good. Robert Dempsey said, what a tool got me in trouble. Mark McElgat got me in trouble. Sarah Norton got me in trouble, but I still love you guys. You're all in, you're all listed. And you're, every single one of these names was brought up in court today. And all of them, I was accused of being. Molly Williams, another one. Mark McElgat calls him a low rent Saul Goodman. I mean, Saul Goodman's a much better attorney than this guy. Much better. Saul Goodman freaking walked through the desert with $7 million. This guy would never do that, ever. I feel safe saying that. Donna Blake. He's like showing me all these notifications. Like, dude, come be me for a day. He's like, Your Honor, somebody made a meme of me. And they put me on a clown, Your Honor. I'm like, if you think that's bad, wait do you see what we did to Gaffney. What, wait do you see what they did to Gaffney and Ryan. Whew. My friend Laura from London. Whew. You don't want to see that. Uh, Llama Feeder is on there. Who else we got on here? We got... I mean, half of you guys listening right now were mentioned today in court. Uh can't even remember them all, but it's like literally comment, every single comment he printed out. Okay. I mean, he's got a million, they did the clown meme a lot. That's on like 10 pages worth of the clown meme. Molly Williams says, why does your voice sound like a girl's voice? Leonardo Nosy says, look at the stars. Very inspiring. We're all curious about you. Okay. Don't bother hiring. Save your money. Noel Chelly Haim says, Jerry Curl says, straight clown show, go anywhere else. Cassie Smith says, the law firm filed a restraining order on someone trying to communicate with them about paperwork filed against them. Accurate, but that's not me for the record. And I condemn 
harassing this guy. Lala Maiden says, please Google how he treats the First Amendment. You might not like his style. Alyssa Reynolds is mentioned in here. Gus T. Wines wrote, this asshat sends letters by email, not certified mail. Mm, true, but he said the word asshat, so that's not good. Pedro Martel messaged him directly and said, Turtle Boy owns you. Jennifer Altman sent him a message and said, I sent you some tissues for your hurt feelings. God, you are absolutely destroying your law career. I mean, I don't condone that, but I would argue uh, that certainly your, your behavior and this ridiculous display that you're doing right now is not good for business. I would not hire you, put it that way. I would never hire you. I think you're a terrible attorney. I think you're a joke. Uh, and Harrison Wachtel says, sup, idiot. Kathy Hill says, my bet is Fojo knew someone or sucked some dick to get into Harvard Law. Now, I cannot confirm that. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh, he appears to be, he has, I mean, he has children. He's been married before. He's had girlfriends. So he appears to be heterosexual. And even if he wasn't, who cares, guys? It's 2020, okay? We got it. We accept everybody. Bold, brave, and beautiful. If he's if he's gay, more power to him, okay? So we're not going to condemn anybody for that. I absolutely condemn that. Homophobia. I don't care who sucks whose dick. Not important to me. Not relevant to the case, okay? So I want to be on record saying that. Um, Adam DeLore, you're in there. Eric Edwards is in here. Who else we got? David, David Owen, you made it. David from, David from England writes, word has reached the UK that you are a shite lawyer who files frivolous lawsuits that you know are doomed to fail just to take money from the poor saps who retain you. I hope that's wrong, but from what I read, the evidence to the effect is mounting up. Exhibit O, you're all in there. You're all in there. You're all going to court, okay? But you're all me, too. He thinks you're all me. Um, so anyway, the, the last one, my favorite one is Exhibit P, okay? Very serious exhibit. Let's take a look at Exhibit P. All right, first thing up. What do we got here? We have here the Harassment Prevention Order on one... Catherine Peter. Bristol Blarney made an appearance in court today. So this is the harassment order, which he failed to point out was thrown out. Thrown out because it was uh, frivolous, unnecessary, ridiculous, and not based on any sort of fact. Plus, she's a lying, uh, crack-smoking whore as well. So nobody really cares about what Kate Peter says about anything. Next one is a harassment order from Hadassah Rose. Adassa Rose, she made an appearance, didn't she? Uh, so there's that. Next up we have, hmm, what is this one? I don't even, I, I've had so many, I can't even keep track. Oh, this is from Hadassa Rose. Oh, when she accused me of being Shawn Michael Gray, whoever that is, and she claimed that my car was sitting outside of her house and her proof was a picture of my license plate. Just zoomed in. She's got, he has Hadassah's after David in here. That's in there. Uh, next up, and he goes, and Your Honor, there's another case involving a, a Rianne Waters. A Rianne Waters. And so here's uh, the Rianne Waters documents. I mean, just once you're teaming with Ryan Waters, think of you who you're allying with here, and you want to be a serious attorney. You're allying with a, a woman who uh, lost four kids to the state, two of them permanently, has an open DCF case against her right now, just lying Filthy, drug-doing, raging, alcoholic, abusive trash, for one. Uh, you also have um, a woman, a gypsy, running a boarding, a boarding house that she calls a shelter, and two businesses that have since been shut down because the money has run out from her scam because we wrote about her. And she's fucking insane, so that's another friend of his. Ryan Waters, a man who uh, killed his dog and beat his girlfriend in front of the daughter he abandoned and never paid a dime in child support to. That's another one. So he's got the Ryan Waters uh, motion for a 
criminal complaint against me in here, which he tried twice, both of which were thrown out. Exhibit A from Ryan Waters, who writes like chapter one of Flowers for Algernon. Uh, <laughs> oy, oy, oy. What else? More Ryan Waters stuff in here. Ryan Waters stuff. He's got Ryan Waters' whole complaint here. Okay. We know what this is for. Is this another lawsuit? Can't even keep track of this asshole anymore. <laughs> Man, what a life I live, huh? Oh, he's got this one. This is my favorite. You guys remember this? <laughs> Look at Uncle. Remember when he couldn't spell Uncle? <laughs> That's into the... Oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, goodness gracious. How does he write like this? I'm still amazed by this human being. Ryan G. Waters, homeless. What is it? More Ryan Waters stuff. Okay. So this went on and on. Took some more notes here from during the day. Oh, he also said that somebody on the voicemail um, said that he was a slobber dobber. I'd never heard this term before. Apparently, he goes, Your Honor, that is a term for a, a blowjob. I'd never heard that term before, but the guy in the on the voicemail, which I condemn, called him a slobber dobber. Um, the this is an act, the voicemail he played during it. This was I, I wrote down the I transcribed it. It said, "What up, deadbeat? Get fucked by that turtle boy bitch," and then they hung up the phone. <laughs> I don't like what is that a threat? Like what? You want to hear the fucking voicemails I get? Give me a break. Uh, then we have here, uh, what else? See, he says, uh, he, he falsely said that I was convicted of a crime. I never said you were convicted. I said you were arrested for domestic violence and a DUI, which you were. You were arrested for domestic violence and a DUI. So you were. Uh, he says that, um, what else do you write here? Um, Anything good? He said that I've threatened people with litig... No, this is all him, actually. Never mind. Oh, uh, the judge actually asked him a good question. The judge asked him, you're not suggesting he can't blog about you, can he? Like, he has a right to, to say these things. But the judge also said, like, he doesn't have a right to mobilize a crowd to go after you. But I haven't done that. Like, to be very clear, I've never done that. And I'm coming here tonight to double down on that, to make it very clear that I explicitly condemn that. I always have. I've said it a million times before. My man, Seven Pounder, this summer, we had a bit of a situation with that. He knows. Other people know. I'm will Like, if you do something like that, I'll forgive you. But I would ask that you stop. That's all. It's not the end of the world. But, like, you know. There are consequences for this shit. Like, I've gone, I've gone to court for Brett. And I'll go to court for Brett again. I don't care. Like, Brett's my guy. I don't give a shit about going to court. Like, it's not a, no sweat off. I mean, it's a pain in the ass. But I did kind of look forward to going to court today. It was kind of weird. Like, I like, I like court. I feel like I really missed out on my calling. Like, I'm up there arguing, and I'm doing so much of a better job than him. Like, so much. He's up there. He was like the, my cousin Vinny's first attorney, the court appointed guy who just stutters all the time. And then I'm, I'm my cousin Vinny. I get, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. But I'm good at arguing. And I really feel like I missed my call on it. Like when I'm standing in front of a judge in a microphone and I get on a roll and I start using big words, whew, whew, game over. Nobody wants that. Bad news for the bad news for the plaintiff. So anyway, if you guys have any questions or anything, I can take as many questions as you guys have. Um, let's see what we got here. This time at least Brett says, yeah. You should become a lawyer. I mean, I'm 38, so it's like people have said that. How am I going to go to law school now, you know, and run a business? And it's just not, not realistic. You were just happy to get out of the house. You know what? That's kind of true. Can we do Zoom on your new computer? I might have to figure out how that works. Yeah, maybe. Um, how long before the ruling? They didn't say it's going to be all electronic, so we will see. How do we submit questions? Just write them in the comments. What are you drinking out of in the cup? Iced coffee, baby. Homemade. For those who have been asking, 
What about a video? What what video are we talking about? Megan says, I'm too mad to ask you. Yeah, you made it, Megan. You were in court today. You made the list. <laughs> Lionel Meeks, you made it as well. Um, where's the Waters Court video? They never got back to me with that. I'm pissed. I don't know what to do. I mean, obviously, nobody's working now anymore. When are you live again, Unc? I go live every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday night. I still haven't decided who my guest is going to be for Saturday. What did you do to Wyatt Earp crying all over the comment section tonight? Oh, I don't know. I th Wyatt Earp, I think, is Michelle Olson, one of the Blarney, Bristol Blarney trolls. Oh, yeah, so let's talk about that for a second. Update on that. Uh, Bristol Blarney. So Jay from Mass Predator Predators has taken a lot of criticism lately, and I have no loyalty to Jay whatsoever. I have a loyalty to the truth. In the news. And Jay is breaking news, so I have a duty to report on the things that he's doing. But I have no... And I've told him this. I've had conversations with him. Like, if you're doing some funny shit and I find out, like, I have to... I'm going to report about that. So, like, people are counting on you, man. Like, people are trusting you. You are the leader of, a like, a movement here. And I understand you're in a, a little bit above your head. But just understand that. That people are counting on you. Because some accusations were made about Jay that he was extorting pedophiles and not, I mean, I've see if that, if there was evidence of that, I would report on it, right? I would report on it, but I, I've seen no evidence that he's doing that. So I don't, I can't, you know, it is what it is. I mean, I understand Jay can, is not the most likable character. He wears a flat brim Chicago Bulls hat for crying out loud. And I understand that, you know, maybe a couple years ago, Jay would be the kind of guy that might be featured on Turtle Boy. But I also believe in redemption. And I believe that what he's doing right now is a good thing. And the results speak for themselves. And some people have suggested that, you know, he's not communicating with the police. You guys don't know that, man. You don't know. Like, trust me. I talk to the police all the time about this stuff. Like, I have sources. Like, that communicate directly with Jay. He is communicating with them frequently. And they and he is, like, he's gotten three guys, to my knowledge, arrested or charged. Three, at least. And there's probably more coming. You got the, Stephen Manis is the big one. I don't care. I mean, the, the police chief is obviously a sexier name. And he's bad. But Stephen Manis is an animal. An absolute animal. And he's off the streets because of, I, I mean, I'm the one that found out who he was and put his name out there, but Jay called the Marlboro police, right? He he had them there. He did his homework with that. So anyway, Jay's got these guys. Because he teamed up with that guy, Ramey, who is a literal scam artist, and the Predator Poacher Organization, the more I see about them, they are a shady freaking organization. They use pictures of actual children, real children, like 13, 14 year old kids. And that's fucking creepy that they send to these perverts. That's fucked up. That is fucked up. That is, if Jay was doing that, I would write about him. Put it that way. So they're accusing, because Jay is associated with them and they're a brand, he, he's going to be coming up with his own brand name. He told me at least. Okay. He told me. So. I, I would hope he does. Be, it, and according to Jay, he signed some kind of contract with them that makes, he has to like pay them royalties to use their brand name. I'm like, just don't, just don't pay them. Just leave. Make them fucking sue you. It's predator poachers. They're not an LLC. They're, they're not an entity. They can't, that's not an, whatever they made you sign is not enforceable. Just fucking ignore it and move on with your life. So, the New Jersey guy, especially, and this guy, Alex, who runs the whole thing, are incredibly unliked by these guys who run this channel, Murder Merc. And they have a guy named Aaron and Sasha on there. Sasha was the one that pretended to be Rami the other day. Did a good job of it, too, by the way. And they they don't like Jay because they have, they have it out for anybody who's involved with Rami, right? And I'm trying to tell them, like, no, no, he doesn't want anything to to do like I mean, he's trust me he wants out from what i've talked to him he, he doesn't want anything to do with him 
So they these guys are kind of going after Jay, and they don't trust him. And they start sending me stuff on him. They're like, look at this. He's using pictures of um, minors, right? He's using pictures of minors. So I confront Jay about it. I confronted him about it last night. I'm like, what's up with this? And he backs it all up. He's like, the minor was his editor when he was 16. He sent a picture of himself as a 16-year-old. I'm sorry. And like, if you think that's fucked up, well, I don't think that's fucked up. To send a picture of yourself? Come on. It's different if you're sending pictures of somebody else. You send a picture of 16-year-old you? I see absolutely nothing wrong with that. Nothing. So those are the pictures he's sending. And I'm like, I, I, I don't think that's a big deal. And he goes, what about, what about smoking weed with kids in the room? And he sends me this video, like a 22-minute video of Jay in a bedroom. And I'm watching it, and you don't even see Jay's face. If he's smoking weed, you, you see him rolling a joint at one point. And there's a, a bowl that they label, like big graphic. Marijuana pipe. dun 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 and then at one point, a child does appear in the room for like a little bit. And the girl looks to be, I don't know, he could probably fill me in. She looks like a teenager. I don't know. I don't really care. Even if you did, who cares? I don't even think, I mean, it's legal. Like, are you allowed to drink in front of your kids? Yeah. So you should be allowed to smoke weed in front of your kids. I'm sorry. If it's legal, then it's fucking legal. Because it is legal. I'm like, and that's what you're... It seems like they're grasping at straws. I understand that they don't like Jay because he's associated with this organization that is extremely shady, in my opinion. Right? And like Lovecraft says, yeah, of course they drink wine in front of kids. Who cares? So what's the difference? It's legal. Big deal. Who cares? I'm like, that's the best that you have? And the reason I brought this up is because I'm watching one of the streams and guess who appears on there saying we should team up? To expose Jay. Guess who appears? Take a wild guess. Who can write? Who's, who's going to guess it first? Ramey? Nope. Blarney. There it is. Yeah. Bristol Blarney shows up in the comments. We should team up. I'm building a case against them. I've been digging. And this and that. First of all, Kate, I mean, it just never ends with her. It's like, Get your own fucking stories. How pathetic are you? You can't, you're so devoid of content. You're, you're on You, the thing about Turtle Boy is I've built an infrastructure in which people send me stories. I don't have to go looking for stories. People just send me story ideas all day long and I get to pick and choose which ones I read about. Kate doesn't have that. So she has to steal and hitch off of me because while writing for me, I can't tell you how many times Kate would message me and I'd be fucking busy, but like, any good stories in the inbox you want me to write about? It's like, bitch, you can read the inbox too. I didn't see anything in there I liked. Well, fucking figure shit out then. I don't, I'm busy. You're fucking asking me for story ideas? Go write a fucking blog. Shut up and get the fuck out of my face. God, that annoyed the fuck out of me when she was writing for me. So, of course she has to, she sees that I have an interest in writing about the predator poachers and then I have an interest in what these murder merc people are doing. I'm interested in this world. And so she, what does she do? She has to latch on to it. And Murder Merc and all those guys, they're in the Discord now. They're in the Discord. But I, I, I went on there and I'm like, look it. I'm like, you guys cannot, if you guys, they, remember, their big beef with Jay and the Predator Poachers is that they smoke weed in front of kids and they use pictures of children as bait. Which again, is okay if it's a picture of you, but not somebody else. So they allege to be people who are outraged about, you know, exploitation of children. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, you are teaming up with a woman who invented child abuse. She lost all four of her kids multiple times for a variety of neglect and abuse. Two of them permanently. And he's like, well, you have any proof of that? Yeah, here's an article of the Attleboro Sun. Her two youngest children being adopted out of national adoption today. Those are hers. Here's confessions from her saying all of these things, like admitting it. This is her. Like you, you are teaming up with a woman who routinely abused her children and neglected them. There were bruises as of six months ago. Her daughter had suspicious bruises on her. Kate told me that she was questioned 
by DCF, the doctors, and the police about it. They all think she did it. Because she probably did. It was either her or Andrew. And more than likely, it was her. And notice she doesn't deny any of this, does she? She denies nothing. She doesn't address it. Of course she fucking did it. Are you kidding me? So you don't get to play, and I and I don't mind the murder murder guys. I feel like they and Jay have a misunderstanding and they could be buddies. And Raimi is the problem. Raimi and the Predator Poachers, they're the fucking problem. Jay's not a bad guy, I don't think. I hope. And I don't think the I don't think Murder Merc and Aaron are bad guys. I think they're re, they're grasping for straws to try to find something that is wrong with Jay, and it's just not there. If the best thing you can come up with is he smokes weed in front of his kid, oh my fucking god. Oh my god. I mean, you smoke cigarettes in front of your kid, that's even worse. <laughs> Who cares? Smoke a weed in front of your kid. So I feel like, you know, that all needs to be hashed out. Hopefully they'll get... To, I mean, as soon as Jay changes the name, you gotta change it, dude. Just ch get rid of Predator Poachers. Just change it. Who cares? Fuck it. Just do it. They're not gonna sue shit. Other people have left there, they haven't done shit. Just leave them. Who cares? It doesn't matter. They've... Raimi has... They've violated their own contract. So just leave. Anyway. Um, yeah. Let's... um. Yeah, so that's that's that. Any other, any other questions? Yeah, so she shows up on there. I'm like, dude, you can't pretend to care about kids and be teaming up with Kate. Because, like, they got emails. They're exchanging emails and shit. I'm like, I'm a, like, if you are associated with her, then we need to look into you, dude. But they don't seem like bad guys. They're West Coast dudes. They don't know. They actually said to me, like, we don't want to get involved in the drama. I'm like, no, 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 no. That... We're not, you're not calling this drama. This is child abuse. Child abuse is not drama. Okay. That, I, I take offense to that when people say, oh, you're just mad. This is personal with you because she left. No, 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 no. I don't like child abuse. Kate abuses children. Let's not forget that. So all these Wyatt Earps of the world, they can't ever address that when we bring that up. Oh, you're obsessed with her. Yeah, I'm obsessed with criminal. Like, yes, guilty as charged. I am obsessed with ratchet ass individuals who are not held accountable for their behavior. Kate Peter included. What she did to those kids when DCF came there and found them in soiled diapers that hadn't been changed. The house is covered in fucking trash dishes everywhere while she's making goddamn YouTube videos pretending to have to be looking for an abortion pill at six months pregnant. No, sorry. You do something like that, you're a fucking awful person. Awful. Just the worst fucking person on earth. And you don't get to go around and expose people like Jay. Because you're not fucking better than Jay, Kate. You're not. I don't care what Jay's done in his past. It's nothing compares to what you've done. Fucking nothing. You are the worst person. And like, that's what a guy called me. I'm like, hey, I'm showing you child abuse and you're showing me smoking weed. And you think these are the same. Okay. Good thing. But I think we're cool now. I had a talk with them. I think we're cool. All right. Any other questions? Susan, I appreciate that. Did you call the fire detectives? No. I, I mean, I, I, just, I don't have time. I mean, if the police aren't going to do their job, I can't keep nagging them. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know what you want me to say. You know, it, it sucks. And if the guy who owns the truck isn't interested in finding out who burnt his truck, I don't know what to say, you know? Check your donos. Oh, good point. I got, let me check the donos. I don't want to miss anybody here donated. Um, we have here, let me read. Ben Milward, thank you very much. Or Bev Milward, sorry, Bev. Apologize, I don't want to screw that up. Todd, Todd, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Is it Rougier? Says slobber dobber on Main South. Might cost a little bit more than that. Anonymous says, for saying slobber dobber with a straight face. I guess that was a popular. Seven Pounder says, what's your favorite band now? And what was your first favorite band? I don't really have a favorite band. I mean, I don't know. Growing up, I like, who doesn't like the Beatles? But content I used to like the Stone Temple Pilots a lot as a kid. Green Day, shit like that. I was a 90s kid. That's the shit I liked. 
M Job says 9:27 p.m. 300 watchers on the live show. Suck on that, Bristol. Absolutely. I don't know if you guys know that Masshole Mitch kind of disappeared a little bit there. And they said he won't be around for a little bit. So that's kind of interesting. It's all, I mean, they're going to fall apart. They're, they're, eventually, Kate will fuck over Mitch and it will fall apart. That's what's going to happen. Kate is, this is what Kate does with every man who gets close to her in her life. She fucks them over. She can't help it. So what happens now from this court case? Uh, I just, I assume you're talking about the one from today, Laura. Uh, I just wait to hear. So I just, I'll be getting something in my email. Either they give me, either they grant the restraining order, in which case I will appeal it, and I'll be contacting the New Hampshire ACLU immediately if that happens, or they deny it. So it'll be one of those two. Kylie update, should have been initial court indictment reading by now, because the courts are closed. The courts are closed in California. They're closed everywhere. But especially in liberal states. The only people being thrown in jails right now are people who are opening up their hair salons and going to church. It's fucking, they're, they're talking about throwing this pastor in church in Worcester. Are you kidding me? I mean, what fucking planet are we on right now where we're sending pastors to jail for preaching and business owners to jail for opening businesses? On what fucking planet? Imagine I told you this three months ago and you were like, that's okay. I'm, I'm cool with that. What is wrong with the American public? I understand people don't like the religious right and that they immediately hear religious and they're like, oh, bad, bad. So I got a solution for that. Just hold fucking church in Walmart. Just go to Walmart and hold church there. I, that's what every pastor should do. Just go there, stand in aisle fucking eight and deliver your fucking sermon six feet apart. It's it. Just hold fucking mass in Home Depot. Problem solved. Anything else? What were you going to say about Michelle Olsen? I think Wyatt Earp is Michelle Olsen. I think she's one of the trolls. I don't, I mean, some of these trolls are Bristol herself. I don't really care. If you come on here and you can't even use a real name and, you know, whatever, then I'm not going to take that what you have to say very seriously. And the things that they're saying are just so weak. I mean, you're supporting Kate Peter. There's nothing more that needs to be said. You're supporting a woman who abuses and neglects children. That makes you trash as well. So th there's really nothing more that needs to be said about that. Nothing more. And notice they, they hardly ever come on here during the live stream because they know you guys will attack them. But as soon as this video is, you know, uploaded after this, then they will go in the comments and they will all like each other's comments. And they'll, you know, they'll, they'll sign into their five different accounts and like it as many times as they can so it gets like eight likes and they feel good about themselves. They're pathetic. So feel free. I mean, our fans are, Turtle Riders are law-abiding, working class people who have jobs. They don't have time to sit in the fucking YouTube comment section all day. They come on for the live show and they move on with the day. But feel free to, you know, they go on there and they take this as like a, by the way, make sure you like this. This actually helps. I see 58 likes on the video right now. Let's get up to 100. Give the video a like, will you? Like it, like it, like it. That shit matters. They actually consider this like capital, like the amount of comments you have afterwards. Whatever. We too could play that game. But, you know, I've never really stressed that that much. That matters to them. That's that's a sign that they're winning. It's not. It's not. We, when you're with Kate Peter, you're always losing, period. And she blocks them. Like, I don't notice I don't block these trolls. They're always like, you're censoring me. You're blocking me. Bitch, you're, you're right here. What are you talking about? We don't block anybody. I'm not K. Peter. She blocks everybody. Everybody. What kind of FUPA computer 2.0 did you get? I got a um, a MacBook Pro. It's like a 15-incher, though. It's like a nice one. Big screen. Feeling good about it, man. Feeling good. Nice and fast. Other questions. Dave Cullen and block me. Where, where is Cullen? Cullen's got to be sleeping by now. No way he's still awake. No way. Holbrook Board of Health bragging about $3,300 in fines. We're going to have a story about them coming out. Those fucking tyrants. Those goddamn tyrants. Fuck them. Guys, this is a war. This is a war at this point. 
I'm getting so fucking mad watching the news. Like, I'm getting gun-grabbing mad. I don't know about some of you people. I've never been so angry. Like, I literally want to grab guns. And I'm not a gun person. And that doesn't mean I want to shoot people or anything like that. But I kind of want to be a crazy gun nut now. It's driving me to be in that. Like, fuck the government kind of shit. Right? I'm seeing what they're doing to innocent people. What they did to that woman in Texas is unfucking forgivable These fucking tyrants who are making $150,000 a year to be a fucking judge. You think he's losing a fucking paycheck? No. He wants her to apologize, to grovel like William Wallace had to beg for mercy. And she said, no. She said, no, I won't do that because I'm not going to apologize for feeding my family. That woman, Shelly, what the hell's her name? We should know, everybody should know her. And she could go down in history books. She's a goddamn fucking American hero. She is a modern day Rosa Parks. She would not move. She would not close her store when the tyrants told her to. And trust me, as a historian, as a studier of history, I know what dark days in American history look like. This is it. We're living in one. And not because 75,000 people have died from coronavirus, but because of what the fucking government is doing right now. It is criminal what the government is doing right now. And they backed off those golf courses today because the people fought back. Don't take their fucking shit anymore. If you have a goddamn restaurant, open it. If you have a business, fucking open it. Make fucking headlines. Get arrested. We're not putting up with this fucking bullshit anymore. We had Mark Lombardo on. We finally have a politician who has the governor's ear who's had enough of this fucking bullshit too. It needs to fucking end. Enough of this shit. Anyway, with my Paw Patrol cup there. Shelly Parks. Uh, anything else? Any other questions? The enemy, yeah, News New England. I know you wanted me on your show. The I, I know I, I mentioned in the comments that I come on your show, but you actually you have to email me, you have to contact me. Like I don't, I don't read, I don't read all my notifications. So turtleboysports at gmail.com. If you want me to come on and talk, I'll come on and talk, and I'll tell my audience to come and I'll bring them to your channel. We'll talk about K. Peter. We can do that, no problem. Let me know, man. Who's MC? What's MC's asking? This, this one was like 1500 I think, the new one. I mean, you can get one for like, you know, 1200 smaller one. I want to buy a FUPA computer with your John Hancock on it. He angrily discarded his Paw Patrol gun. Get out of here, you fucking... Um, you hear about all the Karens in St. Louis, the dying people out? Good. And they all got their names put out there. Good. Tyrants. Those are the, the angry white women yelling at those black students in Little Rock. That's what they will go down in history as. Now, Bristol show is on Thursdays. I mean, Tuesdays, Tuesdays. Bristol show. Give me a break. Any other questions you guys have? Any other questions before we call it an idea? Do you think the Pats are going to be good this year? Yeah, I think they'll be fine. I think the Pats will win, like I've said, nine or ten games. It's been on record. If we even have a season. More, I'm not thinking about anything but coronavirus right now, guys. And Joe Biden. Those are the two things on my mind. And predator poachers. Those are the three things on my mind. And Robert Foja. Four things, okay? That's about it. Mindy Robbins. I should get Mindy on. Mindy's running for Congress in Nevada. And I think the seat is held by a Democrat. We should get more politicians on here around this time. Maybe you guys aren't into politics, but I think it's cool to get people that are actually, I mean, the guy's a state. He makes laws. We had him on tonight. That's cool. Name another show. Bristol Blarney doesn't have that on her show. <laughs> you know, th that's the difference. Legitimacy. Yeah, 80, like in this state, the numbers are alarming. This is a, when this goes down in history, this will go down as the nursing home plague. And we will look back on this and we will look at people like Andrew Cuomo 
and Charlie Baker. And we will say these monsters, monsters allowed the elderly to be ravaged by a disease in an enclosed environment. Well, what were they doing? What were they doing when this was happening? Oh, they were passing mask laws for healthy people. And they were having people arrested for looking at the sunset in San Diego. And they were arresting people for opening up salons. That's what they were doing. That's what the government was doing instead of protecting the people who are most vulnerable to this disease while simultaneously claiming to be protecting them. This is a, in some states, 80% of deaths occurred in homes. New York, only 25%. 66% of deaths in New York City came from where? People who stayed home. Like I've said from the beginning, and I've been saying this for a while, quarantine kills. If you favor the lockdown, you're not a murderer, but you are favoring policies that killed people. And you have to own that. I know it's hard for you to own that, but you did. You did this. That's an undeniable fact. You, you told people to sit in their homes and send one person out to Walmart to catch a contagious disease and then come home and spread it around to the whole family. You did that. That's the stupidest fucking plan I've ever heard in my life. And when you saw people engaging in behavior that could prevent the disease, when you saw people going to the beach, and when you saw people going for walks, and going to the park, and getting sunlight, and doing things that could literally kill the virus that science has showed us is killing the virus, when you saw people doing that, what did you do? You shamed them. You publicly shamed them back into their homes and continued the lockdown. You fucking murderous, useless pieces of garbage. That's all you are. You're not good. I know you feel you want to feel good about yourself to make you, you, you think that you made a difference. You did not. You killed people. You're a fucking piece of shit. Burn in hell. I fucking hate you. You also destroyed the economy too, for what that's worth, and made millions of people destitute and unemployed, and they lost fucking everything because you wanted to feel good about yourself on social media, and you want to use a fucking Facebook filter that said saving lives, stay the fuck home. No, fuck you. Fuck you right in the cunt. Fuck you. Anyway. Yeah, you and like Western Mass Turtle Girl says, you enablers, you absolute enablers. You just want, you are selfish. You want to feel good about yourself. YouTube, they're all guilty. They're taking down every fucking video that goes against this narrative. Videos that can save lives, they're taking it down. Taking it down. Can you tell that I'm mad? I mean, I'm talking about grabbing guns. You've never heard me say that before. I'm a gun grabber now. Mrs. G.I. says, you're turning me on. Watch out, G.I. Turtle. Watch out. You better get angry. Get angry for your woman. That, I'm getting more fire emojis than a freestyle right now. All right, any more questions before we call it a night? I'm lucky my hugging works, but we have too many kids to go. I would doubt people. I mean, like my wife Zoom calls all day, and I got to watch the crotch fruits, and I still get blogs done, but it's fucking hard, and it's annoying. And it's not saving anybody. They can be in daycare right now. There are daycares open for essential workers. You know that, right? Kids of cops, kids of nurses, they go to daycare. They get special daycares. Why do they get daycares? If daycares are dangerous, then they should be fucking closed for everybody. Oh, right. They're not actually dangerous and none of this makes fucking sense, does it? Does it? Fucking joke. Absolute fucking joke. All right, any more questions before we call it a night? Are you on a folding table? Yes. No, I'm good. I like the folding table. It gets the job done. Leave Mrs. G.I. G. Turtle alone. We love her. This was as good as the freestyle Rich says. I'm glad you liked it. Susan M., I appreciate that. 
is Fojo Ryan Waters size? No, I mean, he's a good size. He's a regular size dude. Ryan Waters is not healthy. Like, Ryan Waters looks like a white Ethiopian kid. Nursing homes do need the help, but I hate to say it, it's too late. They let the bug in. They should have done everything in their power to prevent the disease from getting inside those walls and from spreading inside those walls. They've all failed. They've failed massively. I'm with Jennifer. Open this shit up. It can't get any worse. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, people are going to die, but they're dying now. This idea that, no, no, we, we can't open it up because people are going to die. What do you think's happening right now, dickhead? You're third in the country in deaths. You think that's good? Look at Florida. Look at, I mean, they have nothing. Your book is great. I haven't uh, heard you mention it here. For the YouTube subscribers who aren't on the blog and Facebook. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I published it all like two years ago. So I'm going to be writing a part two for that coming up for next Christmas. Can you talk more about the Worcester homeless situation? Are they really getting rounding into the DCU? Advocates quitting. Yeah, they, they quit for about 24 hours because they were forcing the homeless to go into the shelter against their will, which is fucking insane. Insane. Because you're taking away their civil liberties. Like, why? And the police are, I, Worcester police contact me. Like, I didn't sign up to force homeless people to live in the DCU center against their will. And we, they had some um, well-respected professionals quit over that. And then Ed Augustus switched the policy, I, I guess, and some of them came back. But I haven't had time. I mean, I've been so, I have a freaking stack of stories like this big that I haven't had a chance to write yet. And that's one of the millions of stories I haven't had a chance to get to. I apologize. I'm going to try to get to as many as I can. When's your next Jerry show, Unc? I assume Tuesday. I mean, I was on Tuesday this week. We'll see what happens. All right, any more questions before we call it tonight, guys? Quite an audience we've had here tonight, guys. Quite an audience. I should write a book about what? Let's see. Update on the Jerry full-time position. I'm telling you, keep going. And this matters, especially, do you guys listen to it today? Mute is so bad. Oh my God, it's so bad. I can't even listen to it. It's just like, he's not funny. He's not interesting. Nothing. It's so bad. So I'm telling you, flood the comment section. Like Colin and sees this. He's not blind. He sees when I'm on 130 people the whole time. When mute's on 40. You do the math. Who's taking, who, who's going places and who's not? You know what I need? I need Jerry on this show. I need to get Jerry on my show. And I think he'll start to understand we can have some fun together. We can have some fun together. Did you talk about Dave's co-host here on Jerry Show? Yes, we did. We mocked that for a little bit. We talked about that. All right. Oh, is Josh here? <laughs> Accountability for all's here? He never shows up. What did Josh say? Yeah, I don't give a shit about Josh. Do you know that the, the Boston police now have a policy when they see him to call him Turtle Boy? <laughs> he gets so mad. They always say, hey, you're Turtle Boy, aren't you? <laughs> he gets so fucking mad. Oh, it's good. It's so good. Where's the Noah Larson story? I wrote about Noah Larson three years ago. I don't think Jerry would understand the show, but neither did Dave Cullen, and that's kind of what made it funny. The Twitter name again is at Real Uncle TB. Real Uncle TB. Yeah, Jerry loves Turtle Boy. He's a big fan. He's always been a big supporter.
All right, so if nobody else has any um, more questions or anything, it's been a long show, but a great show, a great show. Uh, always a lot of content around here. So I appreciate all the donos, guys. I appreciate the donos. Uh, and I appreciate just listening in general, having you on here. Keep up the good work. Uh, we are almost a completely crowdfunded show at this time. And you know what? That's It's not ideal, but it's better. Because when you're not, when I'm no longer beholden to like worrying about like, am I going to lose this advertiser if I say this? You know, when I don't have to worry about that anymore and I know that I'm going to be crowdfunded, I'm free. I'm free. And so we might have found our niche. This all might have been a blessing in disguise. So I thank you guys very much for donating. And I appreciate you guys. And I love you all. All right. And we will see you all on Saturday night. All right. Peace, Starter Riders.